Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today I will look at uh, Nicholas Humphrey's book Sentience. Nicholas Humphrey is a British psychologist and philosopher and he's known for his contributions to the philosophy of mind, consciousness and evolutionary psychology. The book Sentience seeks to explain how consciousness, especially the rich experience of sensory perception, may have evolved as a survival mechanism in living beings. While Humphrey subscribes to a materialistic view of the mind, he doesn't ignore the richness of subjective experience. His approach is grounded in materialism, but seeks to understand how the physical processes of the brain give rise to rich subjective phenomena like qualia. He attempts to reconcile the subjective and objective worlds through his evolutionary framework. Humphrey also explores the social and moral dimensions of consciousness. He suggests that consciousness plays a central role in human social life, as it allows individuals to model the minds of others and engage in complex social interactions. Now let's dive into the book a little deeper. First, let's start with the definition of sentience. Sentience refers to the basic capacity to feel sensations and emotions, pain, pleasure, hunger, warmth, etc. It is the raw, immediate experience of these sensations without necessarily involving complex reflection or awareness of oneself as the subject of the experience. The central thesis of the book Sentience is that consciousness evolved as an evolutionary adaption that enhances an organism's capacity for survival. I have three excerpts that I would like to share with you. The first one is the invention of consciousness, I suggest, is not unlike the invention of flight. Just as evolution has designed wings to allow organisms to navigate the physical world, it has designed subjective feelings to allow organisms to navigate the mental world. Second one is what makes consciousness special is that it provides a sense of ownership over experiences, creating a self-aware individual who knows that they are having experiences. This is one of the key premises of the book. But what Humphrey doesn't address sufficiently is the fact that many cognitive processes such as decision making, emotional responses and learning occur in animals and even artificial systems without subjective experience. So could these processes have evolved independently of consciousness? The third excerpt is what makes consciousness powerful is not the fact that it gives us access to the world, but that it gives us access to ourselves as subjects within the world. Next, I would like to show you the proposed evolution of consciousness with the help of a short presentation. Okay, so if we start out with um, just a very rudimentary timeline, to signify evolution, we could say that perception is sort of like the basis for the creation of any type of sentience or consciousness. Um, it would be followed by sentience, uh, phenomenal consciousness and lastly cognitive consciousness. And if we were to describe what each of them is, we could say that perception is just the ability to, to sort of detect and respond to simple stimuli. Sentience would be um, the capacity to experience um, basic emotions and sensations. Phenomenal consciousness uh, would entail experiencing the world subjectively, so being aware that the pain you feel and the pleasure uh, is felt by a sense, by a self. <laughs> um, and cognitive consciousness would entail um, higher order sort of reflection, reasoning and thinking. Um, if we think back to the book, The Ego Tunnel that we read, by Thomas Mettinger. 
You might remember that a key aspect of phenomenal consciousness was that we, or humans, um, develop a so a so-called self-narrative. So, part and parcel of the phenomenal consciousness is that self-narrative, and having phenomenal consciousness sort of reinforces that self-narrative as you go along as well. So. That's just an aside. And if you think about which types of creatures would have um, what on the evolutionary scale, we could start out with um, simple viruses, um, bacteria or amoeba. I'd say those for sure were having some type of perception. Um, Humphrey actually divides sentience into three subcategories so he puts different kinds of creatures in those subcategories starting with starfish and worms with the simplest form of sentience going over to goldfish bees frogs and um, octopi and he ends up with parrots chimpanzees, dogs, and humans. So he calls those three categories sensitives, subsensitives, and sentients. Now, the real, um, the real interesting question, of course, is what happens after, uh, what will happen after we developed cognitive consciousness? What's going to be next? And I'm planning on covering that in um, my next video, actually. I downloaded a paper in which we, you know, there's discussion of postbiotic um, consciousness and what that would entail. So let's recap real quick. Perception evolves early in the history of life as a basic survival mechanism. Organisms need to respond to their environments, detecting light, sound, touch and other stimuli without requiring conscious awareness. Early life forms like bacteria or simple multicellular organisms would have perception-like mechanisms, allowing them to react to stimuli. Sentience, or the capacity for subjective experience, likely evolved later as a more sophisticated survival tool. Having feelings or subjective awareness of stimuli like pain, hunger or pleasure allows organisms to prioritize responses based on the emotional or subjective importance of a stimulus. This shift likely occurred in animals with more complex nervous systems, allowing for more richer and more flexible behaviors. Phenomenal consciousness, which involves richer qualitative experiences, such as the redness of red, would evolve as sentient organisms develop more complex ways to interpret and differentiate their subjective experiences. For instance, a simple feeling of hunger could evolve into more differentiated sensations like the experience of different types of foods or tastes. This could provide evolutionary benefits by allowing organisms to better navigate their environment and make more nuanced decisions based on qualitative experiences. Cognitive consciousness, with its emphasis on reflective thought, problem solving and self-awareness, would evolve as an extension of both phenomenal consciousness and sentience. Complex animals like humans would benefit from reflecting on their experiences, planning for the future and solving complex problems. Higher order thinking allows for more sophisticated decision making and long term survival strategies. Let's try and break down Humphrey's central argument. First premise, consciousness evolved through natural selection. Premise two, sentience or subjective experience of consciousness provides creatures with a rich emotional stake in their survival. Premise three, this emotional richness enhances behavioral responses and motivation for survival. Conclusion, therefore consciousness is a survival mechanism that evolved as an adaptive trait. From a philosophical standpoint, the argument Humphrey offers is logically consistent but rests on contentious premises, particularly the claim that consciousness 
has a clear evolutionary function. The validity of his argument depends on accepting that subjective experience offers more than functional cognition, a premise that is not universally accepted in the philosophy of mind. One major potential objection to Humphrey's argument is whether consciousness indeed evolved as an adaption or whether it is a byproduct of other cognitive processes, a hypothesis suggested by some philosophers such as Daniel Dennett. Humphrey addresses this by arguing that the subjective nature of consciousness provides a tangible benefit in terms of survival, but this point could be contested. Another objection could be related to the nature of qualia, whether subjective experience is necessary for survival or whether organisms could navigate the world equally well with just functional processing of sensory data. Humphrey's response is grounded in evolutionary psychology, positing that the richness of conscious experience offers more than just functional processing. So where does that leave us? Nicholas Humphrey's sentence offers an ambitious theory of consciousness. It suggests it was invented by evolution for survival. His writing is generally clear and accessible, especially given the complexity of the subject. He uses vivid analogies and real-world examples to illustrate how subjective experience might have evolved. However, there are moments where his argument could benefit from more precise definitions, particularly around the nature of subjective reality and self. Philosophers may find that some of these key terms, such as consciousness and self, require further elaboration to avoid ambiguity. Still, if you're interested in consciousness studies, neurophilosophy or cognitive neuroscience, this book is worth your time. Though be prepared for more questions than answers. If you prefer watching presentations rather than reading books, I'm going to include a link of a talk that Humphrey gave at the Royal Institution in 2023. The link is in the description box below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.